most famous Jacobite rising, known as the 45 Rebellion, occurred in 1745, led by James Francis Edward Stuart's son, Charles Edward Stuart, also known as Bonnie Prince Charlie, the rebellion gained significant support in Scotland. James provided moral support from France, but did not actively participate in the uprising. Charles Edward Stuart sailed to Scotland from France in July 1745, attempting to restore the exiled Stuart dynasty to the British throne. Claiming to be Charles III of Great Britain, he aimed to rally support from Scottish Highland clans and launch a rebellion against the ruling Hanoverian dynasty. Charles landed on the island of Eriske in the Outer Hebrides on July 23, 1745. This event is often referred to as the Raising of the Standard, as he erected a banner on the shores of Loch Shield, symbolizing his call to arms. The campaign ultimately led to the Battle of Preston Pens. On the night of September 20, 1745, led by Charles Edward Stuart, the Jacobite army left their camp near Duddingston and marched towards the government army positions at Preston Pans. The Jacobite army numbered at around 2,500 men. In the early morning of September 21st, the Jacobites launched a surprise attack on the government forces. Commanded by Sir John Cope, the government army consisted of regular troops and local militia. The attack took place in darkness, using the cover of a sea mist. The battle was short but intense. The Jacobite Highland charge was a fearsome force and the government lines quickly crumpled. They suffered heavy casualties and were forced to retreat in disarray. The Battle of Preston Pans was a significant morale boost for the Jacobite cause. It demonstrated that Charles Edward Stuart's army was a force to be reckoned with. The victory also provided the Jacobites with much-needed supplies, weapons, and financial resources. Equally, the battle had a demoralizing effect on the government forces and increased the level of support for the Jacobite cause among the Scottish population. Following the victory at Preston Pans, Charles Edward Stuart made the bold decision to march into England. The Jacobites believed that gaining support from the English Jacobites and causing panic in London could further their cause. In November of 1745, Charles's Jacobite army crossed the border into England and reached as far south as Derby, which was around 120 miles from London. At Derby, a council of war was held among the Jacobite leaders to decide the next course of action. Some of the leaders, including Lord George Murray, argued for continuing the advance into England. However, faced with logistical challenges, low supplies, and a lack of expected support from English Jacobites, Charles made the difficult decision to retreat back into Scotland in early December. The decision to retreat was met with disappointment and discontent among some of the Jacobite leaders and soldiers. Lord George Murray, in particular, was notably unhappy with the decision. The Jacobite army retraced its steps and marched back into Scotland, facing the challenges of cold weather and difficult terrain. This was a difficult and demoralizing journey. It was known as the Retreat from Derby. Charles and his army spent winter in Scotland, primarily in and around Glasgow. During this time, they continued to try to gather support, but they faced many challenges. During their winter quarters, the Jacobites faced internal divisions and disputes among their leadership. There were disagreements about strategy, tactics, and the overall direction of the campaign. Charles also had to manage relations with his Scottish supporters and French advisors. Meanwhile, the government forces, commanded by Lieutenant General Henry Hawley, had been regrouping and reinforcing after their defeat at the Battle of Preston Pans. Hawley was tasked with suppressing the Jacobite Rebellion. In early 1746, both the Jacobite and government forces moved towards the strategically important town of Stirling. Stirling was seen as a key location due to its proximity to the strategically vital central belt of Scotland. In the lead-up to the Battle of Falkirk Muir, there were several skirmishes and minor engagements between Jacobite and government forces. These included actions around Bannockburn and other locations. General Hawley decided to march his government forces towards Falkirk to confront the Jacobites. However, he faced challenges due to adverse weather conditions and a lack of familiarity with the terrain. The night before the battle, the Jacobite army commanded by Lord George Murray undertook a night march to position themselves on the Falkirk Muir, a plateau near Falkirk. On the morning of January 17th, 
1746, the Jacobites launched a surprise attack on the government forces. They took advantage of the mist and difficult terrain to catch the government troops off guard. The initial Jacobite onslaught caused disorder among the government forces, leading to a partial collapse of their lines. This forced General Hawley to order a retreat. Another regiment of government forces, led by William Augustus, Duke of Cumberland, pursued the Jacobites into Scotland. The two forces finally met at Culloden. The Jacobites adopted a defensive strategy, taking up positions along a line of marshy ground with their right flank anchored on Culloden House. The government forces, led by the Duke of Cumberland, had approximately 9,000 troops and were positioned opposite the Jacobites. On April 16, 1746, the Battle of Culloden began around 1 p.m. The government forces opened fire with artillery, causing casualties among the Jacobite ranks. Despite the initial setback, the Jacobite army responded with a charge attempting to break the government lines. Some Jacobite clans managed to reach close quarters with the government troops engaging in fierce hand-to-hand -hand combat. The Highland Charge briefly pushed back the British line, but the government forces held firm. The British cavalry then launched a counterattack, charging into the Jacobites. Despite his leadership, Charlie was advised to remain in the rear for his own safety, as his capture or death could potentially lead to the demoralization or dispersal of the Jacobite forces. However, he was eager to lead from the front and disregarded this advice. During the battle, Charlie moved among his troops, rallying them and encouraging them to stand firm against the onslaught. The marshy ground hindered the Jacobites' ability to maneuver effectively, while the Duke of Cumberland's disciplined fire caused heavy casualties. The battle lasted less than an hour, and by some accounts, only 40 minutes. The Jacobite defeat at Culloden was overwhelming. Estimates suggest that around 1,500 Jacobites were killed or wounded, while government losses were significantly lower. Many of their leaders were killed and survivors scattered, leading to a widespread and brutal government crackdown on Jacobite sympathizers. The aftermath of Culloden was marked by harsh reprisals against Jacobites and Highland clans. This period is often referred to as the Year of the Butcher, due to the brutal tactics employed by the Duke of Cumberland and his forces. The Battle of Culloden effectively marked the end of the Jacobite threat to the succession of the throne, it also led to significant changes in the Highlands, including the suppression of Highland culture and the dismantling of the clan system. The rebellion effectively ended in defeat at the Battle of Culloden in 1746. Following the decisive defeat, Bonnie Prince Charlie, along with a few of his loyal supporters, managed to escape the battlefield. He went into hiding, relying on the assistance of Highland clans and sympathizers to evade capture. After a series of narrow escapes and evasions, Bonnie Prince Charlie was on the run from the government forces. He saw refuge in the western Isle of Scotland, including the island of Bembecula in the Outer Hebrides, arriving there on April 27, 1746. It was on Bembecula that Charles encountered Flora MacDonald. She was a young woman from South Uist, known for her loyalty to the British crown. Her stepfather, Hugh MacDonald, was a captain in the British militia. Flora MacDonald, sympathizing with the plight of the prince, agreed to help him escape. She devised a plan to disguise him as her Irish maid, Betty Burke, and presented him as such to the local authorities. On June 28, 1746, Charles, disguised as Betty Burke, accompanied Flora MacDonald and her party as they set off on a dangerous journey across the islands in mainland Scotland. The group managed to evade government patrols and made it to the Isle of Skye, where Charles was able to meet with Loyalist supporters. Charles Edward Stuart left Skye for France on September 20th, 1746. The departure marked the end of his attempts to reclaim the British throne, and it signaled the conclusion of the Jacobite Rising 1745-1746. Shortly after, in that same month, Flora MacDonald was arrested by government forces for aiding Charles. She was arrested after one of the boatmen had talked about the strange maid who had traveled with them to Skye. She was held in custody for several months, and eventually moved to the Tower of London, but being allowed to go on parole. She earned a great amount of sympathy from her story and was freed in 1747. Flora MacDonald gained a level of fame for her role in helping Charles escape. After her release, she married Alan MacDonald and emigrated to North Carolina with her husband and family. After the American Revolution, she returned to Skye with her family in 1779, where she died on March 4, 1790. 
Flora McDonald's act of assisting Bonnie Prince Charlie became legendary, and she is often celebrated for her courage and compassion, even though her motivations were more to do with a sense of honor and humanitarianism rather than political allegiance. As for the Bonnie Prince, he lived in exile in Rome until his death on January 1st, 1766. Despite never attaining the British throne, he continued to assert his claim and remained an important figure for Jacobite sympathizers. James Francis Edward Storr's legacy lies in his role as a focal point for Jacobite aspirations and his steadfast belief in his right to rule. His presence and claim to the throne fueled multiple attempts to restore the Stuarts, and his memory continued to inspire Jacobite sentiment even after his death. <laughs>